This week on the Lemming Report, linebackers are on the docket. Who's going to be the next Ray Lewis or Brian Erlacher? Tom has the answer. The Volpianos are here. We are joined in studio by quarterback recruit Mike and his Pro Bowl dad, Phil. Tom answers your tweets. Plus, we show you all the top news and notes from the week. The Lemming Report starts right now. Welcome back to the Lemming Report. It's linebacker week here on the show, and we have one of the all-time best with us, along with his son, who is a top recruit for the 2012 class. Phil Vlipiano, who had a 13-year career in the National Football League, a four-time Pro Bowl linebacker, and he has the bling, a Super Bowl 11 champion with the Raiders, and his son, Mike Vlipiano, a soon quarterback at Cheshire Academy in 2010 at Rumson Fairhaven. Mike passed for over 1,800 yards and threw 17 touchdowns while adding eight on the ground and won the Central Jersey Group 2 state championship. We are thrilled to have them with us, and uh, now we'll let Tom take it away. Well, thanks, Molly. Yeah, I'm really excited about being here with uh, Phil Filippiano and his son, Michael. But, Phil, I wanted to get to you first. I really believe that uh, your team, the Oakland Raiders, probably, in my opinion, the most exciting, the most enig en enigmatic uh, team in NFL history, You've been part of some of the biggest plays in the NFL. Tell us a little bit first about your play with the uh, Immaculate Reception. You were supposed <laughs> to be covering Franco Harris on that play. Want to give us a little background? Well, Tom, this was a crazy one. And we had been behind all day. It was snowing. It was cold. It was ugly. We were in Pittsburgh. And, you know, you don't ever get a break in Pittsburgh when you're, the, you know, especially the Oakland Raiders, but whenever you're a visiting team. So anyway, we finally, Kenny Stabler does a bootleg. We get ahead 7-6. Everybody's saying, just was 4th and 22, snowing. They're backed up. Just no penalties. That's all we said in the huddle. We go, we go, you know, we break the huddle. Here they come. We put in a brand new defense. Two linebackers locked up on the running backs. Everybody else is playing a nice deep prevent. Franco Harris is my man. They snap the ball. I run in. I grab him. I say, this thing's over with. He ain't going anywhere. And Bradshaw goes that way, and I let him go. So he starts jogging down the field. I'm like, What's it? where are you going? What are you doing? Stop it. You're a pro. You don't have to run down the field. So anyway, he starts getting a little faster down the field. I saw Bradshaw throw. Boom, I'm gone. I run across the field. I see Jack Tatum. I see the ball was going to Frenchy Fuqua. Tatum comes up, nails Fuqua in the back. The ball just flies off his shoulder pad right over my head. I turn, and there's the jogger going down the field. He picks it up, and he's gone. Right place at the right time. Right place at the right time. So that turned out to be one of the biggest plays ever. And Frank and I, play. to this day, we enjoy it. Every time I see him, we laugh. And they put a new statue up in the Pittsburgh airport. I don't know if you've been there, Tom. And they got Frank Franco Harris. stretched yeah. out catching the ball. As soon as I saw that, I called him up, and I said, this thing's coming down. I don't know when it's coming down, but I ain't going to miss a tackle again. You know, so. well, Michael, you know, obviously, um, you weren't born when your dad uh, finished his career, but you probably heard a lot about his great exploits as a linebacker in the NFL. You're a quarterback. Tell us a little bit about why you chose that position. You know, I always played linebacker growing up. Um, I was probably better at it for a while. And, but my mom, like my dad's got all these broken knees and stuff, and she doesn't want that to happen to me. So she was like, you can throw the ball, so why not try quarterback? And then probably eighth grade, played quarterback for the first time, and uh, it stuck. <laughs> well, you know, you threw for over 1,800 yards as a high school senior, led your team to a state title, yep. but you didn't really get any sniffs. And to me, that's kind of... Uh, unheard of really when coming from yeah. new jersey and north jersey so you decided to take the the ball into your own hands and go to a prep school cheshire one of the famous prep schools in the country out in connecticut um how's it going out there and i know you've gotten one game under your belt but do you feel like you've improved in enough to uh, get division one looks uh i hope so i think i have i've worked really hard all off season the last two years i've really put in a lot of effort uh, i hope it pays off but it's really going well. I'm looking forward to an awesome season. Just oh, give me a ton more opportunities and hope it all pays off. No, Phil, you've seen a lot of quarterbacks. You played with Kenny Stable. I think you played with Jim Plunkett also. Sure. And so obviously you've been around a lot of great quarterbacks. Why don't you give us your unbiased critique of uh, <laughs> Michael Filippiano well, as a quarterback and hey, as a prospect? You know, and, and Tom, I, I really, really, and Michael knows this better than anybody, I don't, I don't pat anybody on the button unless I think they're doing a pretty good job. And, Michael showed me a few years ago that 
he could throw the ball. And I'm like, whoa, this thing's getting pretty good. So um, and we decided a year ago I, I needed an expert opinion. So I called Kenny Stabler up. We went down to Alabama, and Kenny and Michael spent a few days together. And Snake said, Phil, this kid's got it. So then he goes in the last year, first year as a starter, leads the state championship, plays a really, really good team, took him down. And well, it took down everybody along the way. But I said, I think he can do it. I, I wanted to ask you a little bit, Michael. I, obviously, you grew up mm -hmm. with a famous father, and uh, you probably now, since you're a quarterback, studied quarterbacks. Do you yeah. compare yourself to any quarterback, college or pro, your style? You know, yeah. I mean, I've always, I grew up loving Rich Gannon, because when the Raiders used to be good, and they're going to be good again this year, but <laughs> when they were in like early 2000, Rich, Rich Cannon was there. He was always improvising and uh, throwing the ball like under arm and stuff. And I loved watching him play. I always try to like, I don't know, I just want to win. Like I like the way Ben Roethlisberger plays. So he's big, tough, and he just wins. And I mean, I just want to get the job done, get the W. I don't care how it comes. But I, I want to be big and tough like him, but I also like the way Rich Cannon improvises. Then, I mean, last summer, my I was saying, when I and, uh, saw the snake, and Snake's awesome. I mean, I, <laughs> I love the way he plays. I love seeing him on the films with my dad. And, I mean, he's a role model for me, too. Well, great. And I love having both you guys here. And I really appreciate just coming out. Well, stick around and don't touch that dial because coming up next, Molly and I will be answering your Twitter questions.